Hi there and welcome to this lecture about Sweden's history from the year 2020 to 2022. My name is Marcus Henriksen and I'm a history teacher here in Sweden. During this time we can see that the corona pandemic continued. In the beginning of 2021 there were over 100 million people around the world who had now received the virus and about 2 million people who had died. But more and more people began now to issue vaccines and receive vaccines from companies such as Moderna. Vaccines against COVID-19. During this time we can also see a rush on the stock market. They had a 40% increase. And pharmaceutical companies, computer companies, social media companies, th they did best. The housing market also saw prices continue to increase, both in the United States, but also in Australia, China and Sweden. With the high level of immigration here in Sweden, more and more people now began to have problems renting and buying houses. The government's policy, that is interest deduction, minus interest, etc., continued to ever increasing housing prices. And young people found it increasingly difficult to enter the housing market. The government added some money to increase housing construction, but it was still far from what was required and needed. In the capital of Sweden, Stockholm, over 1 million people were now in the housing queue and the situation in most Swedish cities was critical. So we can see the start of a housing bubble here in Sweden but also in countries such as China. In China, the construction companies started to have more and more difficulties selling homes and houses. So more and more economists began to talk about the housing bubble, both in China, but also in countries such as Australia and Sweden. The inflation risk also increased during this time. More and more people borrowed money, the government borrowed more and more, and the Federal Reserve in the United States, they created a whole bunch of money, which in fact leads to a higher inflation risk. So more and more economists began to worry, and the Swedish Central Bank, also known as Riksbanken, they said that everything was cool. Don't worry about it. It will work out just fine. The healthcare system here in Sweden during this time was also in some kind of crisis. In Sweden, we can only see 500 intensive care places. And that is in the entire country. So basically you can compare Sweden's healthcare with other countries such as Macedonia, Albania, etc. when it comes to intensive care places. So the healthcare system here in Sweden basically got worse and worse. We can now see over 170,000 people in the healthcare queue here in Sweden and more and more people that chose to seek healthcare privately instead and also to take out private health insurance. In Sweden we have some, let's say, not so good politicians. One of those are Dan Eliasson. The confidence in all the authorities that he has ruled over has fallen, such as the Swedish Migration Agency, the police, 
and most recently the Authority for Social Security and Preparedness. During the Covid epidemic he told people that they should not travel only when it was absolutely necessary but he himself went off to Spain on sun vacation several times. But he was not fired. Instead he got a new job with the same high salary as before but with less responsibility. Several Swedish people on social media got really angry. During this time we can also see the start of the Kallak mine in the north of Sweden but because mining companies started to evaluate if they could mine an area or not there were some protests. During this time the Sweden Democrats here in Sweden received a bunch of criticism mostly from the Social Democrats but also the Green Party and the Left Party. According to Prime Minister Stefan Löfven they were a major threat to Sweden's democracy and he said this during a national TV interview. However, how this could happen in Sweden is really unclear because Sweden is protected by a constitution. So in order for a political party to make Sweden into a dictatorship, you need the people support during two major elections. So basically for a dictatorship to form here in Sweden, you must have the people with you at least four years, preferably more. And that's really hard to imagine that the people here in Sweden would like a dictatorship. Anyway, during this time we can also see a major cheating with the school results here in Sweden. Then we have the so-called Pandora leak or the Pandora papers. Thousands of managers, celebrities, CEOs, politicians, companies, etc. were found to have hidden large sums of money in tax havens. But how did Sweden and the Swedish government react? Well, instead of trying to stop the tax havens, they said that they should work in order to stop the transparency of the tax havens. Then they tried to influence the EU in this direction. They also promised amnesty to anyone who brought the money back to Sweden. And then the corona pandemic evolved. First we can see the so-called Delta variant, but then we could now see Omicron. Sweden then, along with many other, other countries of course, began to introduce the so-called vaccine pass. But more and more people were upset and started to protest. They asked questions like, how safe are the vaccines really? What side effects do they have? How effective are they? And why do you need to take more doses than two? And is the infection airborne or not? The Swedish government was really clear. The vaccines help more than they do harm. But they also said the following they were le less safe than they first thought. They were also less effective than they had first thought. More doses will therefore be relevant. Then we have the so-called Christmas shopping with Stefan Löfven. He told people that they shouldn't go out if they didn't need to, but he himself went out shopping. And we can see more political problems here in Sweden during this time. 
when the center party here in Sweden wanted to introduce mark rents, this was enough for the left party to put their foot down. Stefan Löfven then had to resign as Sweden's prime minister. Instead, the Social Democrats chose Magdalena Andersson as their new leader. And she then started a new government here in Sweden, first for the Social Democrats plus the Green Party. But then the Green Party left because they didn't get their budget on their way. Instead, they got a budget from the right wing. And the Green Party was not happy about it. So they left. So Magdalena Andersson was prime minister here in Sweden for seven hours. But then she left and then formed a new government, but this time only for the Social Democratic Party. So she became prime minister once more. She then abolished the welfare tax here in Sweden. And we can see that the gaps between the rich and the poor increased. Sweden got hundreds more billionaires during this time. However, it was still difficult for many retirees and seniors and those with low paying jobs to get along. Then we have the last agreement, which basically meant that the workers here in Sweden got less rights. Stefan Ingves, the leader of the Swedish Central Bank, continued to set fire to the Swedish economy by pushing down the interest rates. How, you might ask? Well, he basically gambled 1,000 billion Swedish crowns, approximately Swedish entire state budget, that the interest should be low in the future. But Swedes' debts increased during this time rapidly. It is now over 4,000 billion Swedish crowns, which makes Sweden the second most uh, in debt country per person in the world. More problems during this time. Well, we had more shootings here in Sweden. Many police officers wanted to quit their jobs. Teachers wanted to quit. Dentists also. So yeah, there are some problems in Sweden during this time. We can also see that they amended the Swedish constitution. The Swedish parliament voted for the constitutional uh, amendment required to push through the so-called Foreign Espionage Act, which in practice is a, what we can call WikiLeaks Act. It basically means that whistleblowers who inform the Swedish media about this let's say, for example, war crimes committed by the Swedish military or other countries' militaries that Sweden cooperates with abroad can now risk up to eight years in prison. Only the left party here in Sweden voted no. During this time, the inflation got higher and higher. In the United States, there, they had around or about 8% interest if you exclude house purchases. In Sweden we had about 7% if you exclude house purchases. Turkey they had 70% along with other countries such as Sri Lanka and Lebanon. So maybe it was time for a higher interest rate. Many countries therefore started to raise their interest rates, such as Great Britain, Russia, Turkey and so on. But here in Sweden, Stefan Ingves, he just said everything is cool, just chill, this will work out just fine. But suddenly, after a couple of weeks more, he then woke up and understood that we had a major problem here in Sweden. So he started to higher the interest rates. But you should know that they were still pretty low. 
So is the Swedish economy doing well during this time? Well, according to most economists, yes. But we must also take into consideration the fact that the commodity prices during this time, wood, iron, etc., that Sweden sells a lot, a rising stock market and higher housing prices, which in fact leads to higher loans and more money in the system, is, let's say, put the market and the Swedish economy higher and higher up. But we have huge problems here in Sweden, such as the housing crisis, the EU debt, now we have to pay full price here in Sweden for our membership, the Swedish pension system, which is broken, just as Norway, and the healthcare crisis. And more and more economists, both in Sweden but also in the world, now began to fear for an economic crash and collapse. And in Ukraine and Russia, we can see that more and more troops and military was gathering on both sides. During, um, that is around the Ukraine-Russia border. Russia's demands were that Ukraine should not join NATO. They should also recognize the Russian annexation of Crimea. But the West, along with Ukraine, said that we do basically what we want. We are free countries. We will not recognize the annexation of Crimea. The US also sent a bunch of extra military equipment to the Ukraine. And yeah, Ukraine also began to discuss joining NATO. They also threatened Russia, along with the EU and US, with large economic sanctions. Ukraine also used their official Twitter accounts by sending a bunch of memes, basically making fun of Russia. So more and more people now began to fear for a conflict between Russia and Ukraine. In many countries, including Sweden, they chose to show off their military capacity. Here in Sweden we did it on our largest island, Gotland, the media talked more and more about the dangers of a Russian invasion, and so on. The corona pandemic continued to spread during the year 2022. Hundreds of thousands of Swedes now received the virus variant called Omicron every day which in fact, in combination with an increasingly higher vaccination rate, led to that people now started to be more and more immune against the disease and could now return to a more normal everyday life. So many countries in Europe started to open up. Denmark was first here in the Nor um, Nordic countries but then Sweden followed. The Swedish government did not want to release all information regarding the handling of the corona pandemic. So I hope that you during this short lecture have learned something new about Sweden's history. The sources I have used for this lecture are the following. There are some major Swedish newspapers such as SVD, Expressen, Swedish News, SVT Play, some YouTube videos, and yeah, you can basically pause the video if you like and just look at these links. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. You can also feel free to add me or email me if you like, I will try the best to help you with your questions. I hope that you have a great day. Bye.